Hello and welcome to this video on converting between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Now let's just say we've got some pizzas here. How many pizzas do we have? Well we've got one whole pizza, two whole pizzas, three whole pizzas and an extra half a pizza. So we can see that we have three and a half pizzas. But can you see that we could also see how many half pizzas we have? So we've got one half pizza, two half pizzas, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves. So we have seven halves of a pizza. So we have two different ways of writing how much pizza we have. This is known as a mixed number. And the reason it's known as a mixed number is because we've got a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. This thing on its own, by the way, this half, is known as a proper fraction. And it's known as a proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. This, meanwhile, is known as an improper fraction, also known as a top-heavy fraction. And that's because the numerator is greater than the denominator. The numerator is greater than the denominator. Now, in this video, we're going to explore how we can convert between these two forms. Now, if we had three and a half pizzas, how would we work out how many halves we had? Well, in the three pizzas, how many halves did we have? Well, we had six halves, and we got that by doing the three times the two. So in the three whole pizzas, we had six halves. That's the three times the two. And then we had that extra half, so we added on that one. So three times two plus one gave us that 7. So we kind of multiply those numbers together and we add on that number there. So let's just do some examples. We've already done the first one, 3.5, so let's go on to the second one. We've got 2 and 2 thirds, so we want to convert that to an improper fraction. So we just do 2 times 3 is 6, plus the top number, the 2, is 8. So we have a numerator of 8 and the denominator notice is the same. So if that's 3, we have the same denominator, so we get 8 thirds. What about the next one? We got 5 and 3 fifths. So for the numerator, we do 5 times 5 is 25, plus the numerator, the 3, is 28. So we have 28, and the denominator, again, is the same. What about 1D? We've got 10 and 5 sevenths. Again, we do the 10 times the 7, which is 70, plus the 5 is 75, and we have the same denominator, which is 7. Now, what about if we want to go the other way? So let's say we had, I don't know, 11 fifths, and we want to work out what that was as a mixed number. Now, let's consider if we had 11 fifths as pizzas. So I've got a pizza consisting of fifths. So we've got 5 fifths there. But we could have another five-fifths, so we're up to ten-fifths of a pizza, and then we could have a further fifth of a pizza. So we've got eleven-fifths of a pizza in total. Now, how could we write that as a mixed number? Well, we can see the ten-fifths of a pizza made two whole pizzas, so we had two whole pizzas, and then we had a further fifth, so it'd be one-fifth. And the way we got that too is we worked out how many times did 5 go into 11 because that tells us how many full pizzas I can make. And then that 1 there was basically the remainder. When we divided 11 by 5, that was a whole number of times 5 went into 11 and the 1 was the remainder. So let's illustrate this with some examples. We got 7 thirds. We ask ourselves, how many times does 3 go into 7? Well, it goes in twice. And what was the remainder? Well, it was a remainder of 1. So we, have, we put the 1 at the top, and we still have the same denominator. So it would be 2 and a third. What about the next one? We've got 11 over 8. How many whole number of times does 8 go into 11? Well, it goes in once with a remainder of 3. So we put the 3 at the top, and then we have the same denominator. What about the next one? 38 over 7. How many times does 7 go into 30? Well, 28 is the greatest multiple. That's four times. So it goes in four whole times, and then we have a remainder of 2. So it's 2 over the same denominator is 7. And then finally, this last one, we got 100 over 11. How many whole number of times does 11 go into 100? Well, it goes in nine whole times. That gets us up to 99. So it goes in nine whole times. 
and we have a remainder of 1, don't we? So it's 1 over same denominator, which is 11.